Our guest today is Pastor Carl Gallup from Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and Messianic Rabbi Zev Perret with Messiah of Israel Ministries. We're so honored to have you guys with us again it's today. It's an honor to be here. And uh, we enjoyed the Thank program you, yesterday Jesse. with both of you gentlemen. And uh, just real quick, y'all are kind of working together on a new book. Yeah, we are. And uh, you're going to be going to Israel and filming a documentary over there. That's and right. Stuff, and, so that's and, going to be and, good. Yeah, and Zev is is headquartered in Tel Aviv. Okay. I mean, that's his home nation, his yeah. home lang his, his language is Hebrew. He grew up, born and raised there. And yeah. He's all over the world ministering, yeah. but he, yeah. he lives in Israel, in yeah. Tel Aviv. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's just honoring so, us with his presence Yeah, here. so he's come over here. here in here. Alabama. He's come over here and honored us. I'm going to go to Israel and honor them. <laughs> well, I, think, no, I think we're all honoring the Lord here. That's Amen. right. That's Amen. right. That's right. Jew that's and Gentile right. together, the that's one right. new man. So tell us just a little bit about the new book. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Zev and I met years ago around a story in a book that I wrote, a true story of, it's called The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, the story of Yitzhak Kaduri. And um, the bottom line is that true story of this most venerated rabbi in Israel's modern history, mm -hmm. who at his death, right before he died, wrote a note saying that Yeshua is the real Messiah. And it just wow. rocked the Christian world. It rocked the Jewish Orthodox world. Of course, it rocked Zev's world because he was a Jew who also had found Messiah and a rabbi who had found or trained in the rabbinical schools. And so he knew about the whole Kaduri story and, and he's connected to it and his family's connected to it. And, but he couldn't get people in Israel, Jews in Israel, to really believe this because it yeah. was being covered up by yeah. the deep state and the fake news in Israel. So when I wrote the book, it burst the story wide open again. Yeah. He wound up with the book. He read it. He's in the book because I knew of his ministry there. I didn't know him. He yeah. didn't know me, but yeah. I just used him. And so the meantime... Anyway, the Lord worked out. It's a long story, but He worked it out where we finally met each other. Now we're in ministry partnership together. Been doing that for years. Now we're getting right, ready to write a book. It's under a major publisher, Defender Publisher, Crane, Missouri. Uh, they've already hired a film crew. They're going to send me to Israel. Uh, we're going to do a documentary. We've, we're writing the book now together. Most of the manuscript is done. The publishers are thrilled about it. And what it is, is just this it's, it's, it's opening up this whole story of Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, where it's come through the years. Mm -hmm. It's supernatural. Things are happening prophetically in the world. It's all tied mm -hmm. to this. Jews are mm -hmm. being saved in Israel. He's using this ministry. Like never before. Like never before. And God's using that book that I wrote, the story, the true story of Yitzhak Kaduri, using his ministry in the midst of it around the world. In the underground church in China, there are hundreds of churches in China yeah. that know this story, have the book there. And a lot of Chinese people are coming to Israel, witnessing to Jews in the street, Chinese Christians now. I mean, there's wow. all of this is in the book and so much more. Uh, witnesses have come forward. Secrets are being told finally. Mm -hmm. Mysteries are being revealed. Uh, people are confessing to things about the story that we didn't have before. Wow. Uh, it's absolutely astounding. People are going to be... Cover-ups, big cover-ups. Cover-ups. We're exposing those. We have wow. found people that have come forward and said, yes, this is a cover-up. Here's, you know, here's why. Um, the attacks he's received in Israel, uh, it's, it's absolutely astounding. And wow. so one of the things that this book is going to do my brother, I do believe it's all over. In fact, the head of the publishing company, I was talking to him yesterday. We were up there. Yeah. And he said, Carl, he said, I've, he, he said, I've had this feeling only once on another project that we did years ago that just burst into this worldwide. People just went crazy. They understood it. He says, and we've published a lot of books and all of them bestsellers and we do great yeah. and yeah. God uses it. He says, but I've got that feeling again, said this is going to be earth shattering when it comes out because it's going to help the Jews to finally understand the truth of this story. It'll lead more Jews to Yeshua and it's going to help yeah. Christians, Western minded Christians to say, well, yeah. what's a big deal about some Jewish rabbi? Yeah. It says, like saying, what's a big deal about Jesus? Yeah, yeah, I know it really is. Wow. Yes. Because yeah, so so we're going to end this book. We're going to teach Christians how they can witness to and minister to Orthodox Jews, particularly those that are uh, Christians that don't understand the culture and mm -hmm. the the mindset of mm -hmm. the Orthodox Jew. So it'll help Christians. It'll help the Jews. It's all about Yeshua, and it's and it's this it's this uh, um, increased story of. 
uh, Rabbi Kaduri and the amazing impact it's had. So anyway, it'll come out in a few months and we're really, wow. really excited about it. Thank you for yeah, asking me. Yeah, that will be very interesting. And to see the documentary. They can also see the movie, uh, the uh, Rabbi, Who found, Rabbi Messiah. Who found Messiah as well. Yes, uh, they it's, can order it's in that. a documentary. They can order it. I think it's on the internet in several yeah, places. Yeah. I think I saw the whole movie on YouTube the other day. I don't oh, know if well. that's even legal, but... I mean, I mean, you know, somebody put it on YouTube, and I Everything's don't. Everything's on YouTube. Yeah, now. I know, I know. <laughs> but listen, speaking of that, man, thank you for what you do here. Thank oh, you for having well, thank us. You very what much. you do for the kingdom in this day and age of communication, yeah. information, technology, and I, I want to invite your your viewers, please support this ministry. Yeah. This this guy is amazing, and 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 the material you put out is quality, and yeah. and in this age, people are hungering for this kind of stuff. Sure, they're hungering for it, and they you're are. giving it to them. So thank you. Thank, well, thank you, you for having us thank and thank you, you for what much. you do. Um, I, we have a lot uh, happening right now in the world and in our country and I guess um, different places. And um, the last time you were here, we spoke about them moving uh, the embassy uh, uh, to Jerusalem. And I think anybody who has been in uh, the church world, who calls themselves a Christian, who has been a student of the Word for any amount of time, should know um, the responsibility of supporting, as we talked just a little bit about uh, yesterday's program, uh, praying for Israel and uh, how we should basically be friends with Israel. Any Christian ought to know that, uh, should know the Word enough to know that. And we've heard it talked about they were going to move that by different presidents. They never did, and then President Trump did. Uh, President Trump has probably been one of the most controversial presidents, I guess, that we've ever had, maybe, because the news media just really does not like him at all. It has divided the country. Uh, to say the least, and we could go on and on. But what I would like to know is, I would like to know from someone who lives there you go. in Israel, <laughs> from someone who is from there, what, how do you, how do you, how does the overall, what is the feeling of the country about this move and about President Trump? Uh, what should the church world know about that? Well, first of all, we, the fake news that we have in America is yeah. also in Israel. Right, okay. Fake news is a world problem. It's not an American problem. Okay. And the spirit behind the fake news and the spirit behind the attacks is Satan. Sure. And so we understand it's all spiritual warfare so here. So you're saying there's a deep state and a deeper state. There's a deep state. <laughs> <laughs> and the deeper state we is have Satan. Deep, we, yeah. that, that's right. A deeper yeah. state is Satan. Israel recognizes Donald Trump as a friend of Israel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the media says. It doesn't matter what the newspapers say in Israel. Most newspapers do say that. Some newspapers don't say that. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is the average Israeli, not just the government, the average Israeli in the streets of Israel, whether he's a secular Jew, an mm -hmm. atheist Jew, or a Orthodox Jew, mm -hmm. all agree that Donald Trump is a friend of Israel. They don't understand okay. about Jesus too much, but they yeah. know that he's a friend of Israel. Okay. Now, I've said this over and over again. Donald Trump is not an angel. No. He's not a pastor. Right. But he's been positioned by the God of Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacob, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, mm -hmm. for, for this time to do what he has done. Okay. He's moved the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the only president that did what he said he's going to do. I think it was issued in 1995. Mm -hmm. But only Donald Trump did it in the 70th year of the nation of Israel, prophetic, we look at 1967, what happened? It was the year of the Jubilee, not mm -hmm. Yovel. 1967, Israel regains Jerusalem back. Right. We go 50 years ahead, we hit 2017. That's when Donald Trump declared, I'm going to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. A year later, 2018, he does mm -hmm. the impossible. In the 70th year of the nation of Israel, during the celebrations, we're in that year right now. We're speaking right now in the 70th year. Eight in the Bible represents new beginnings. We think about uh, Jesus standing up and saying, I am the fountain of living waters. John chapter 7, verse yes. 37. When did he say this? 
He said it, the Bible says, in the great eighth day, representing new beginnings. He is the new beginning. So we understand that this happened in a new beginning, okay. biblically, prophetically, right. okay. in the 70th year of the nation of Israel. What, it's huge. Mm -hmm. So we're not just looking at the embassy being moved. We're looking at Donald Trump recognizing Israel as the eternal biblical capital ordained by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will write my name mm. on Jerusalem. God's name is on Jerusalem. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, prophetically pointing to that. And no man, no angel fallen or so, no demon is going to be able to stop it. It doesn't matter what the news says. It matters what God says. God's hand is upon the nation of Israel. Right. What does it have to do with the Christians around the world? Everything. Okay. Number Here one, because get. the Christians around the world that are praying for Israel, and they prayed for Donald Trump to be, to be elected. I mean, it was, God, it was a God thing, but prayer activates what God, yes, sure. what God ordains, and, and that's what it did. Sure. We need to understand that the people of Israel are rejoicing. The Independence Day of Israel, what we call it the Independence Day, is usually a one-day celebration. Mm -hmm. This year, it was four days of celebrating. Wow. The streets of Jerusalem closed. The streets of Israel closed. Why? Because they are, they're understanding that there's something prophetic here. It's more than just the embassy being moved. Mm -hmm. Everybody's under, rabbis are understanding is prophetic. Jews are understanding is prophetic. Right. The result, the gospel is going forth. Yeah. We can preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. We had salvation. We have one salvation documented on video, on camera, on 45 minutes before the U.S. embassy was being moved mm -hmm. in Talpiot, which is uh, in the inner part of where the embassy is, near the Western Wall, near the Welling Wall, near the old city. Mm -hmm. Because of not what Donald Trump did, because we eventually went to the scripture mm -hmm. and, and, and proclaimed this, a Jew gave his life to Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, wow. on the camera. 99% of Israelis endorse Donald Trump, recognizing he's a friend of Israel. That's why he's being persecuted. Sure. That's why he's, he's, being, he's, being, he's going through what he's going through. The Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, is going through the same thing. They're working together. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Netanyahu also is not a believer in Yeshua, but he's also been positioned for such a time like this. Right. He also said, we've never had a greater friend mm. of Israel than President Donald Trump. And again, we give all the glory to Jesus, sure. but we are living in prophetic times. Sure. What is it pointing to? It's pointing to the new Jerusalem, the new heavens. That's mm. what I see. Yes, we see what's going on in the Middle East with ISIS, with Russia, with all the nations trying to attack Israel. What's happening right now in Israel as we're speaking, as mm. missiles are being launched from the Gaza Strip into southern Israel. And again, we're, it's very important for me to, to emphasize this to the people. We love the Arab people. Sure. We pray for the Arab people. We witness to the Arab people. What's happening in Israel does not represent the Arab nation. It represents terrorism. Mm -hmm. So I want to make that clear. Sure. We're not against the Arabs. We love them. Sure. There's not going to be peace in the Middle East or anywhere in the world, but only through Jesus, only through Yeshua HaMashiach. So I want to make that clear that our yes, ministry uh, loves the Arab people. Man. Sure. That's, what, that's what's happening in Israel on the yeah. prophetic side, on the biblical side. What's happening in the world, the world's going crazy. The world's supposed to be going crazy. That's true. You know, we're not setting that's any true. dates. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. The right. Bible says no one knows. But we do know that we're living in the most right. prophetic, prophetic times time since, since the, the first, first coming, coming of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Of wow. Yeshua HaMashiach. We really that's are. Right. And we've never seen a generation closer to the second coming of mm. Jesus. Yeah. The role of the church is to unite together. The Bible says that as Christians, as believers, as nations, mm -hmm. we've been grafted into the olive tree, Romans 11, 17. Mm -hmm. What's the olive tree? It's Romans, it's, it's Jeremiah 11, 14, it's Israel. Mm -hmm. Every Christian, if you're a born again Christian, mm -hmm. you've been grafted into Israel. You are spiritually Israel. Wow. Ultimately, it's you and I, I'm a Jew, I'm grafted back into the olive tree, Romans 11, 23. And ultimately, it's only you and I, the ones who believe in Jesus, who gave their life to Jesus, who seek first the kingdom of heaven, we will reign with him. Yeah. He's coming back to the land of the Mount of Olives, and only those who call in His name shall be saved. Jesus said it with His own mouth. No one makes it to the Father, right. but only Amen. through Me. Amen. And this will help Christians understand the passage of Scripture that, that speaks and says, thus all of Israel will be saved. That's mm -hmm. in the New Romans Testament. Romans 11, 26. Yeah, right. it doesn't mean that, what, what it means is, because it goes on to say in, 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 in Ephesians 2 and 3, it talks about the one new man, Jew and Gentile, under the blood of Jesus. We are the new temple that's being built. That's we right. are the ones that are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The church 
the church is spiritual Israel. Spiritual Amen. Israel right. is the church. Amen. And when I say church, I'm not talking about a building with stained glass windows and a denomination and a sign. I'm talking about the called out believers around the world, Jew and Gentile, who are confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. So when it says, thus all Israel will be saved, some people interpret that and say, well, see there, all the Jews will be saved just because they're Jews. No, nowhere right. does the Bible say that. That's Jesus, right. who, when God put on flesh, He put on Jewish flesh, right. and He stood there and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one, how many is no one? Does no one include the Jews? And yeah, no one comes to the Father but by me. Yeah. Jesus, so that's what, that's, that helps to understand what it means by all of Israel will be saved, I spiritual mean, right, Israel. Thank you. And I, if you look at John chapter 4, verse 22, I, I mean, it says in English, and Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know from salvation is for the Jews. Now, can a Jew give you salvation? Absolutely not. Only Yeshua right. can. But, it, but we need to understand that the, in, the, in the Hebrew, the word salvation is the word Yeshua, which means Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it says, you worship what you do not know. Mm -hmm. We worship what we know, for Yeshua is from the Jews. John chapter 4, verse 22. Yeah. Yeah. And so the name of Jesus is all over the Bible. So we need right. to understand that it's huge when the Christians understand that they're spiritually Israel. Yes. And that Romans 11:26 is speaking about Jews, physical Jews like me, mm -hmm. and spiritual and, and, and nations like Gentiles you that are gra grafted, Gentiles in. grafted into the olive tree. And thus we become the one new man. We know Romans 11:25 and the fullness of the Gentiles. What's the fullness of the Gentiles? There's a number out there. No one knows. Only God knows what that number is. But when that number comes to completion, mm -hmm. it works together with Romans 11:26. And then all Israel shall be saved, and we know the rapture, and we yeah. go home to meet, yeah. meet so the Lord in the air and go home. It's going to consist of physical Jews. It's going to consist of nations grafted in. That's all Israel shall be saved. That's why it's, it, it, it's so dangerous when I hear that teaching out there that Jews don't need the gospel. I know. And, I mean, the, and that teaching we're loving, the Jew, we're loving the Jews to hell. To hell, yeah. You're saying, I love you, so you don't need the gospel. What? What? Or, you you're, or the Bible says in Romans 1.16, Paul said to the... For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also right. to the Gentile. And Paul was a Jewish rabbi. But right. it doesn't Who's say under the blood. It doesn't say to the Jew better. That's right. It just says to the Jew first, which means God has order, and God's order was from That's Israel right. to yeah. the nations, and now from the nations back to Israel. And the reason it says to the Jew first is because the Jew received first, and therefore he will be judged first for his rejection. Yeah. Mm. So we don't want to be partakers of the rejection. Right. We want to be partakers of the. That's good. Of the inheritance of That's the right. of the of the yeah. harvest. Yeah. So and it's very important. So wow. all this that we're talking about, the prophetic, what's happening in Jerusalem, the 70th year, the embassy being moved, Donald Trump being positioned, the demons going crazy right now, trying to wipe out Israel. They know that their time is limited. Yeah. Satan knows his time yeah. is limited. Wow. So he's trying to, yeah. to, to do what? To attack Israel because Israel is where everything started and where everything is going to end. And by the way, that was prophesied in Revelation 12 where it says the dragon, that ancient serpent who is Satan, That's right. went off then to continue to attack the woman, which is Israel, that gives birth to the male child, right. which is Jesus, gives right. birth to the gospel. The gospel comes out of Israel. It right. goes off to attack the woman and those who hold to the testimony of Jesus Christ. So in other words, the last day spiritual outpouring, demonic mm. outpouring is going to be against Israel and the church. That's and right. oh my gosh, that's exactly what we're living right now, right. right out of Revelation chapter 12. And so when your viewers look at us on this set, you know what they're looking at right here? Spiritual Israel. Yeah. Amen. Jew and Gentiles, Amen. under the blood of Jesus, we have been all grafted back in to the olive branch. That's right. See, he was separated from the olive tree because he was not a believer in Yeshua. But when he believed in Yeshua, he was grafted back in. Romans 11, you and I heard the gospel in America. We believed in Yeshua. We were grafted in. That's right. So together, we're a part of that olive tree now. The olive tree is Jesus, which originally, you know, out of Israel comes Jesus. So sure. it's Jesus. And, and so now we're the one new man, the new temple God's building. We're the Jew and the Gentile grafted back into the olive tree. That's See, right. a lot of people think, well, Jews are already, the, the olive tree is the Jews. No, it's not. It's spiritual Israel. It's Jesus. Yeah. And if you're a Jew that doesn't believe in Yeshua, you're not a part. You've been, you're cut off from the you olive tree. You may be born a Jew. Right. You will die a Jew. But an eternal Jew is one that's grafted back into the olive tree. Grafted back in. How do I graft back in? Believe in Jesus. 
See? That's good. And you know, you said something a moment ago, Pastor JT, you told me I could do this, so I'm going to do yes, it right here do if it. you don't yes, mind. Yes. If, but, but you said something a moment ago that this audience needs to hear because it is profound because the vast majority of the Christians in America's churches do not know what you're getting ready to talk about. When he said Jesus is all over the Old Testament, mm. now we mm. immediately think of pictures of Jesus, like Abraham taking his son Isaac right. to sacrifice and carries the wood on his back for three days. And, and we think of prophecies of Jesus, like Psalm 22, you know, where it says, He has pierced my hands and my feet, and they gamble for clothing under my feet, and they say if he saved others, Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. So there's prophecies of Jesus, there's pictures of Jesus. There are types of Jesus, like King David, who pulls off his kingly crown, puts on the priestly robes. Now he's the king, the priest, brings the ark to the people, brings God to the people. There's a type of Christ. But more profound than any of that, and what most people in, in America's churches do not know, what he's getting ready to talk about. And I'm going to let him explain. I want to steal his thunder. But when you're witnessing to Jews, and you show Jews this, that are open to this, that the Holy Spirit's open, you show them this, they go, oh my gosh, I, I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. I've never understood this before. It's profound. Mm -hmm. It wakes up Jews. Many Jews are coming to salvation because of what he's getting ready to explain. Yeah. But because a lot of the, the rabbis know this and a lot of the elite know what he's getting ready to say, they, they, they've tried to change this word Yeshua into something else. So I'm going to hush and just explain what I'm talking about, that Jesus is all over the Old Testament. And when you show it to the Hebrew people in the Hebrew, they freak out. Well, let's go back to the origin of it, which is uh, the time of Yeshua, Jesus, when the high priest asked Yeshua, Jesus, are you the Son of Man? Mm -hmm. And he answers him, you say I am. And we know that he's speaking about the great I am when Jesus walked on the Sea of Galilee and his disciples thought they saw a ghost. He says, I am that I am. He says, it is I, the great I am. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in Hebrew. That's yep. what it means. Or Moses, who should I say sent me? It is I, yes, the great I am. And he said, you say I am. The high priest understood what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And that's when he tore his clothes. The, in the same way, when they look at the Bible and they read the Psalms and they read the Proverbs and it says, and King David is saying, the Lord is my salvation. In Hebrew it says, the Lord is my Jesus. Mm. The Lord is my Yeshua. Now, why do the Jews don't see that? Well, number one, they were blinded in part so the nations can get salvation, but the enemy has to do something. Those same high priests that started, that started this, they also saw the Lord is my Yeshua, wow. the Lord is my salvation. So they changed the name of Jesus in Hebrew to Yeshu instead of Yeshua. And Yeshu basically means may his name be blotted out forever. So we have Jews in Israel and around the world reading the text. They're seeing Yeshua, but they don't know that Yeshua is Jesus because they've been taught that Jesus' name is Yeshua, which is a curse word. We see the enemy trying to get him out of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now we're going around Israel and around the world and trying to tell the, the Christians around the world, Jesus is all over the Old Testament. Jesus is a translation. Wow. Nothing wrong with the translation. Right. But the truth of the matter is, when Mary, Miriam, was... was, was Jesus' mother, and she called Jesus. She didn't say, Jesus, come, Jesus, come. She said, Yeshua, Yeshua come. Yeshua, Yeshua. come. Hebrew. Salvation, come. Salvation, come. And we're showing the text to the Jewish people. You, uh, the Lord is my Yeshua. And it's all over the Old Testament. You can find hundreds of Bible Anytime passages. Anytime you see the word in English, salvation, it underneath says in, in Hebrew, Hebrew it's Yeshua. Yeshua. So is Jesus all over the Old Testament? He's everywhere. In wow. fact, it says in John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. In Hebrew it says, and the, and the Torah. And Torah is not religion. It just means God's instruction. Right. We're not to follow the rabbis. We're to follow only Jesus, only Yeshua. But it says, and the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. So if He is the Word, He has to be all over the Word from Genesis to Revelation. He yeah. can't just be in the Old Testament. Yeah. And therefore He is all over the, New Te the Old Testament. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. He's everywhere. The rabbis, the Orthodox movement, the Sanhedrin are frightened of this because they know that it's going to bring in the salvation of yes. Israel. When the Christians around the world know this, right. and they know how to pray to Israel, wow. and they know how to witness to Israel, and they can show a Jew, you don't have to know Hebrew. Yes. You just show them, read that in Hebrew. Right. The book of Psalms, it's going to open their eyes. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The result, boom, all Israel shall be saved. 
This is what the Christian world needs to understand. This is what Satan hates. What he doesn't want to do is using the deep state, using the, you know, and trying to indict Benjamin Netanyahu, trying to indict all this political stuff is spiritual. Spiritual. Let me give a couple of biblical examples for our American Christian audience of what he just said that will just burst this forth in people's minds. Now, everything he said, profound. And now a lot of Christians are going, I never knew that. I didn't yeah. understand that. The literal name of Jesus is throughout the Old Testament. And in 99.9% .9 of the places where it is used, when you read it and just insert Jesus wherever you see the word. in English. Yes, in English. If yeah. you just insert the word Jesus where you see the word salvation in English, if you're reading the Old Testament, it'll blow you away. I'll give you two examples. I'll start in the New Testament okay. where it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess He's Lord. That's a quote from the Old Testament. That's a quote out of Isaiah. When you're reading your English Bibles and you read that passage in the New Testament, there will be a little footnote. You go down to the bottom and it will quote. And I can't remember right now. It's Isaiah 47, 47 maybe 40, 46. But, but, but I can paraphrase it and your people can, your viewers can look it up. Watch this, brother. So when you look at that passage, here's what it says. It says, and salvation is brought to you, or, or God is the one who brings you salvation, okay? And that comes from the word Yasha, which is yes. Jesus, or, or excuse me, Yeshua bringing, I will bring you Yeshua. I will bring mm -hmm. salvation. And, and so it says, and God is the one who brings you salvation. And then a, about two verses later it says, and at that name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So, what it says is, God's the one who brings you Jesus. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. That's right there in Isaiah. Okay. Now, another example. When um, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the back of the foal of a donkey, he says this was to fulfill the prophet uh, 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 Zechariah uh -huh. about, Behold, your king will come to you lowly and riding on the back of a donkey, etc., etc., etc. All right. When you go look up that passage in Zechariah, what it says is, and God will bring to you salvation on the back of a donkey, hmm. on, the, on the foal, of a, on, on the colt of a donkey. He will bring to you your salvation. So what it says is, when the Hebrews reading it, God will bring to you Yeshua. He will be riding on the back of a donkey. Mm -hmm. We had two rabbis fall on their knees when they read this. Yes. Two rabbis fall on their knees and say, Yeshua, Yeshua is the Messiah, Yeshua is the see, Messiah. They see it when you, when you show them that. Wow. But we talked about this the last time we were together on your show, but very quickly remind the folks that you say, well, why don't, why don't they see this? Because the rabbis, ancient days ago, they developed a little acronym. They changed the word Yeshua because they know this is in the Old Testament. So they, 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 they want to reserve Yeshua to simply mean nothing. It just means salvation. Which is just God, you know, right. God. So when, saying who God is. So when, uh -huh. when, when a Jew then wants to refer to who we would know as Jesus, the Christ of New Testament, they know His name is Yeshua. And if you uh -huh. plug His name into the Old Testament, it brings the whole gospel alive and they don't want that. So they changed His name. Wow. And you tell them what the name was changed to and what it means. Well, I think we mentioned it before. It's yes. Yeshu, which means may his name be blotted out mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. See what that... You I'm see, sorry. God says in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, I will blot out the name of Amalek forever. Amalek is an anti-spirit. Right. The enemy says, oh yeah? Like I will blot right. out the name of Jesus forever. We see that spiritual warfare right yeah. there. Yeah. Everything that God says he's going to do to Satan, Satan wants to do to the body of Yeshua. Yes. And he starts with Israel because he knows Israel is exactly where it's going to happen. Wow. And I want to make sure our Western Christian, Western mindset, Western, I mean, American sure. and European nations and all the people that listen to you, I want to make sure they understand exactly what he just said. Because when he said they use the name Yeshu, which means may his name be blotted out forever. In Hebrew, each of those letters that make up that word Yeshu is an acronym. Right. You know, like we have CIA. Mm -hmm. Well, what is that? Well, it's an acronym in for Hebrew it says central. Y y shimo okay, you y hear shimo that? May his name be blotted out forever. And I'm giving a very nice definition right. to it. It's a much 
It's, it's nastier a, than that. It's, yeah, we found like a nice way to explain it, but it's very yeah. bad. But when you take the first letter of each of those words from that phrase, it's like CIA. That's an acronym for Central Intelligence Agency, okay? He just said the Hebrew words, and if you take the, each letter of each of those words, it's in English, Y-E-S-H-U. Yeah. Yeshu. Now, what a, what a diabolical way to do this, because it sounds so much like Yeshua. It does. Yeah. And to the Western ear that doesn't know Hebrew, if I say, you know, praise Yeshu. Uh, to the Western ear, I'm telling you, I know to you that sounded horrible, but yeah. but to the Western ear, that sounds like a term of endearment, almost like a yeah. child. You know, yeah. we're yeah. saying, "Oh Jesus, I'm so intimate with Him. I don't call Him Yeshua; I call Him Yeshu." Yeah. You know, because it sounds so sweet. But they don't know; they're cursing the name of Jesus, and well, that's, that's right. what the Orthodox have done that's with that word. That's what Satan wants, and sure. they do that sure. because they know the name of Jesus is all through the Old Testament. So that's why it's so important that the Christians around the world know this. Yeah. Because you may, if you don't know this, you're going to take God's name in vain. That's right. Mm. And you're going to encourage the Jews to take God's name in vain. Mm. And that's what the enemy wants. You see, when you quoted that Bible passage, I think it's uh, Revelation 12, 17, if I'm not mistaken. And the dragon was enraged and went to make war against that's the Revelation woman 12, and the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's word and hold firm to the testimony of Jesus and be sure. Right. That's what you were quoting. That's right. And that Bible verse over there actually is the remnant is the bride of Yeshua. Yes. You see, Satan hates mm -hmm. Jesus, but sure. he's, there's a certain remnant that he hates, and that's a remnant in, in, in uh, Revelation 12, 17. Those who hold firm for mm -hmm. the testimony of Jesus. Those who know who they are in Jesus. That's us, That's the, the one yeah. who the enemy wants. That's who he wants to stop. He doesn't want to stop the ones who are just, you know, in religion. He doesn't care about religion. Sure. He's looking for those who have a relationship with Jesus. Sure. And hold that's the one. firm to and the word. And hold firm to the word. The church of, the, the congregation of Philadelphia. The one who is blessed, the one who has access to the key of David through God. Where is the key of David? It's in his nail-pierced hands. Mm. That's the church that he's trying to stop. Yeah. yeah. And the more that we know this, the more we can present this, yes. the more the Christians can understand what the one new man is all about and what it means to work the harvest of the end times. And wow. speaking, speaking of his nail-pierced hands and Yeshua being all through the Bible, brother, do we have a... How much yes. more time do no, we have? We, I want him to teach something to your audience that's going to blow him We're good. I was just getting comfortable. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Is it, but you told me I could do this because yes. I know so much about what you he teaches ahead. and what he understands. Yes. I teach the audience for a few moments here <clears throat> because I'm sure we're, we don't have all day, but, but you can do this, about taking the name of God, Yahweh, yud Hey vav Hey yud Hey wah Hey, and put it in the ancient Hebrew language, explain that whole thing, and the pictographs that it represents and what the name of God represents. This is going to blow your audience away, brother. Mm -hmm. And so you teach that. And, okay. I'll, and I'll interject every now and then, but you teach it. Okay, first of all, if we go to the, uh, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the book of Revelation. It says, I am the Alpha mm -hmm. and I am the Omega. Well, in Hebrew, the original Hebrew, it's I am the Aleph and I am the Taf. I am the Alpha and the Omega. So the Aleph would be the first letter mm -hmm. of the Hebrew alphabet, 22 letters. The last letter would be a Taf. If you look at the ideographic language, an original Hebrew, biblical Hebrew is ideographic or pictographic. It's, it's, it's like hieroglyphics, if you will. They had pictures for the they, most ancient They had language. pictures. So it's numer numeric and it's also ha it also has pictures. Okay. The Aleph, which is the Alpha, is a picture of an oxen. Ox head, the ox head, head of an ox. The taf, which is the omega, the last letter, is a picture of a cross. It's or a an T. exact cross thousands of years before, before Jesus. Before Jesus, comes. before the Roman Empire, before cross. they knew even crosses. Now that's not surprising because if you go to Psalms chapter 22, King David, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, had said, Eli, Eli, lama zavteni, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He's talking about himself. And then we have a switch in, in Psalms 22 where he's speaking about the cross. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Dogs have surrounded me. We see the whole, the whole... Did King David know it was a cross? He didn't know. He was speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Crosses didn't exist yet. The Roman Empire didn't exist. They didn't know what yeah. it was. In the same way, in the original Hebrew, the ideographic language, the rabbis, the Jews, they didn't know what a cross meant. They, had, they didn't know. Yet their very alphabet had a picture of a cross to represent the Tav. And now, Jesus said, I am that. Now, many times, and I don't know, you probably got emails from people uh, that they have the name of uh, like God, because they read a G, and then they have like a line. Yes. And then it says D. Why is that? 
Why are they not writing the name of God? Because they've been told or they've heard that Jews say that you cannot pronounce the name of God because God's name is too holy. Well, that's a big lie from the enemy because Jesus said, if you're ashamed of my Father in heaven, yeah. then my Father in heaven will be ashamed of you. So by us not pronouncing the name of God, which is in the Word of God, we're ashamed of our Father yeah, in heaven. The people of we're God pronounce the, Holy the Word of God all the way up. Through the where, where do they take it from? They take it from what Paul said in Romans 11, 11, we are to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Provoking the Jews to jealousy does not mean we become partakers with the Jews. Mm -hmm. It means that we preach the gospel in truth and we don't compromise the Word of God. That's how you provoke the Jews to jealousy. Now, interesting, when the rabbis, the Sanhedrin, the Orthodox movement, before Jesus was on the cross, they pronounced the name of God. Mm -hmm. They had no problem reading the name of what you would see in English, Lord, with a capital L. Yeah. In Hebrew, it's, uh, it's Yehovah, maybe Yahweh in some translations. But in the, in the picturegraphic language, they looked at it after Jesus was on the cross, maybe 60 years later, 70, I don't know how long. And I'm going to do something Jewish. You're even less than that because at the, at the temple being destroyed in right, 70 right, AD, right. they less than that. got rid of it. And then they looked at it and they did something very Jewish. Oy, 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 oy. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. If the Jews read the name of God in the ideographic language, they're going to believe in Yeshua, in mm. Jesus. We need to do something about this. We need, it's a cover up. Again, just like the, yes, the, the it's a cover up. Same, deep state. same. Wait till you hear this. We're going to tell the Jews that the name of God is too holy, so you can't pronounce it. We're going to tell the Jews that if you pronounce the name of God, there's going to be a curse on you. The mm. result, Jews in general, in Israel and around the world, don't pronounce the name of God. They say Elohim, or they say Hashem, which means... The name. The name, but they won't say Yehovah, which is Lord in Hebrew, because they believe that if they do it, they'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. The enemy is trying to stop them from seeing what has nothing to do with being holy. It has to do with being unholy. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. Now, if we look at the picture, picturographic language, the word ye, yud, hey, vav, hey, basically says... Well, oh, don't, don't do it like that. Don't give oh, it away. Okay, Let me, do right, each okay. letter. Because this is... This, this is he, he was getting ready to just... I'll let, I'll let, let you do it as the okay, one man. I'll because what, what... And he'll back this up. Because when you look at it, the reason they were going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, is because after the cross and after Jesus had said, I'm the Aleph and the Ta, I'm, and by the way, Aleph, Oxhead, there's a reason for that. The, the letter Aleph means the one, and it was often used, that letter was used to represent the person of God okay. because it means the, the biggest one, the mighty one, the, the first one, one the strength. strong one. Ox and an strength. ox head in the ancient agri agricultural society, the ox was the most it's like a, 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 a three-quarter, I mean, a two-ton pickup truck. Sure. You know, it was the workhorse. It was like a tractor. And so, but it was also very expensive. And it was also used for the peace and fellowship offering in the temple. So how do you make peace with God? Sacrifice an ox. Why? It's the most expensive thing you have. Give up your pickup right. truck. Give up your tractor. You want peace with God? Get seek your eyes off the, the world. Seek first the kingdom okay? of heaven. It's also the fellowship offering. How do we have fellowship with God? Give up your tractor, give up your ox, give up, the, give up your money, give up the most prized thing you have, right. put it on the altar, and you can have peace and fellowship with God. So mm -hmm. when the ancient Jews saw that ox head, they understood that's God, peace, fellowship, the most prized possession. And then he said, I am that, I'm the Aleph, and I'm also this cross. This, and the cross symbol is not an X. It, later they changed yeah. it many thousands of years later, but it started tough, tough like a perfect cross. Now watch. So they knew all of that. And they knew Jesus was saying that. But watch. Then after the crucifixion and the resurrection, watch this. Okay. They looked at yud he vav he, and here's what it says in those same pictographs. Yud represents the hand. That, I mean, that's what it says. It says it's, the, the, the picture was like that of a, of a hand, mm -hmm. and it means the mighty work. Okay, in the ancient hieroglyphics, the yud. Okay, he is used twice. That means behold. Vav or wa means a spike or a nail. So when they looked at the meaning of the of the word Lord, Yahweh, here's what it says in the pictograph: Behold the hand, behold the nail, behold the hand, behold the nail. Right there, in the name of God. Now, who wow. said Thomas? 
Je watch this. This is important. When Jesus appeared to the disciples first, Thomas wasn't there. So when they went and told him, we've seen the Lord, what did Thomas say? When I see the nail prints in his hand and in his side, I'll believe. So in the next week, Jesus is among his disciples. Thomas comes in the room. Jesus says to him, behold the hand. yud heh wah -he. mm. yud heh wah -he. Be And then he says, touch here my side. Behold. He, he literally says, and the King James says, behold the hand. So it's in Hebrew. Yes. And so watch. What was Thomas' response? He kneels and he says... Yahweh, my Elohim. He worships him. Lord, you are Lord. Lord, oh Lord, my God. And he worships him. And Jesus allows him to worship him. You are my Lord and my God. And what he said in Hebrew was, Yahweh Elohim. Elohim is the first word we hear for God. Genesis 1, 1, where it says, In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And throughout the Old Testament, we hear the phrase, Lord God, Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Elohim. When he told Thomas, behold the hand, it hit Thomas. That's Yahweh. Yeah, you're, you're the creator. You're Elohim. And he worshiped him, my, my Yahweh and my Elohim. And he fell on his face and worshiped Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, that's in the New Testament. You see how much American Christians miss from the scriptures because oh, we don't yeah. know Hebrew. Sure. We don't know the, the ancient understanding. And now tell them about how how they eliminated that. Today's Hebrew that people in school, they don't learn that because the rabbis after Jesus, they eliminated all that from they the Hebrew because, alphabet. Yeah, because they don't want them teaching in school the, pedi the ideographic language because everywhere you're going to find Jesus. You're right. going to look at Genesis, you're going to see Jesus. You're going to look at Deuteronomy, you're going to see Jesus. So they don't want you to see Jesus. Right. Israel is the only nation in the world, as far as I know, that has eliminated their own alphabet. Wow. And, and changed it. And changed it. What we're doing right now in Israel, praise God, is we're taking the original alphabet, walking in, around Israel, walking to, uh, to schools, to districts, to people, to ev basically everywhere, and showing them the original language. And, and people are getting angry. Why did the rabbis eliminate the original alphabet from our, from our culture? Why did they do that? Well, we'll show you why. I am the Aleph, mm -hmm. and I am the Taf. I am the Alpha, and I am the Omega. Behold the hand, behold the nail, the great Yehovah, the great Yahweh. Mm. And when and, the Jews see that, they go, oh my gosh, the rabbis have been hiding this from us. And that's why our project the, about Kaduri. The new book coming new, out, we'll have all this in it and so much it, more. You know, we're looking at tsunamis, you know, end times, there's going to be earthquakes, yeah. there's going to be yeah. tsunamis. I think that when, one of the earthquakes and one of the tsunamis that Jesus was talking about is a spiritual tsunami as well. And that's what this revelation is going to do. It's going yeah. to... It's going to, in a good way, it's yeah. going to rock people yeah. to salvation. So does all that make sense, brother? Oh, Listen, you can take the word Elohim in Hebrew, and when you break it out into its Hebrew letters, and then look at the pictograph from the ancient language, and then the ideograph, here's what Elohim says. And you've got to remember that that's the first word that God gives for himself. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. A few chapters over, you start here in Yahweh, Yahweh, and then you say Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh is used... 7,000 times in the Old Testament. Elohim's used 3,000 times as the name of God. And then sometimes it's together. But if you take Elohim, where Yahweh breaks down into behold the hand, behold the nail, here's what Yah uh, Elohim says. When you break it all down, it says, it says, God, who becomes your shepherd, is the one who did the mighty work of separating the waters out of chaos and calming. Hmm. And that's why Jesus told the Pharisees in John chapter 10, verse 17, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Because I am God and I am the shepherd. I am Elohim. They understood what he's talking about because they understood what Elohim means. And guess what Jesus did? He calmed the waters wow. right in front of the disciples. Yes, and they said after that night on that boat, they said, who is this that even speaks to the wind and the waters and calms them? It's Elohim. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 40. Verse 4, what is his name? Yeah. You what is sure, his surely name? you know. Surely you know. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's in the Old Testament. Yeah. So, so this is this kind of stuff we're trying to bring to the Jewish people, to the world. We want yeah. American Christians to get this too sure. because it just brings the Word alive. See, just like the Jew says, I've never seen this. Western Christians say, I've never known this. Yeah. How well, much, well, even though I believe. Satan doesn't want you to know it. Yeah. yeah. But even though... Western Christians believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus is the Christ. Now their belief can be even further solidified 
Because in the Word of God, not something Zev says or something Carl says, but in the Word of God, God is my Jesus. Amen. God is my salvation. Jesus. But mm -hmm. once you understand all this, that's what it says. God is my Jesus. Once you understand the ancient pictographic language and why the rabbis changed the alphabet and after Jesus, you understand. Yahweh, behold the hand, behold the nail. Elohim, I am God, who is your shepherd, who calms the chaos and turns it into calm waters. Yeah. That's me. That's who I am. And then we get to John, and how does it open? And that word, mm -hmm. that word in the beginning was the word. And that word, yeah. Elohim Yahweh, became, was, was with God and was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the Father. And in John chapter 14, right before Jesus goes to the cross, He's talking to His disciples. He's calming them. One of the disciples steps up and says, well, just show us the Father. If you just show us the Father, we'd believe. And He said, have I been with you so long now that you don't know who I am? If you've seen me, you, you're looking into the eyes of the Father. Wow. He's just put on flesh. Yahweh Elohim is here with you. That's why Thomas knelt down and said, you are Yahweh, you are Elohim. And in fact, in John 1, 14, if you read it in the Hebrew, it says, and the Word became flesh and tabernacled among yes. us, yeah. which is also pointing to the new heavens to earth, because Revelation 21, 3 says, behold, the tabernacle of man is now with God forever. Yeah. So He tabernacled with us, we have eternal life, and we tabernacle with Him forever. Which fulfills the Revelation. feast of the Lord, the feast of tabernacles. A absolutely. So, absolutely. Is it just, but, you, wow. but you mentioned, uh, Pastor <laughs> Carl, the, uh, Genesis. Yes. And we, we look at Genesis, uh, Elohim, it says in English, and, the, and in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew, Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shamayim ve But the word uh, Bereshit is translated in English uh, in the beginning, it, it's true, but in Hebrew, Bereshit has another meaning. Bereshit also means covenant. Mm. So it means in the beginning, it also means in covenant. The first letter in, first letter in the Bible that spells Bereshit, that spells covenant, is the letter Bet. If you look at original scroll, scroll the Bet is enlarged. Why is mm. it enlarged? God is speaking to us because in the ideographic language... It's capitalized. It's capitalized. It's also capitalized and enlarged. Yeah. It's even big, the uh -huh. whole thing. And it's at bet, the first letter means house. House. So God created the world in order to have a house with man. For mm -hmm. example, Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Bethlehem, house of bread. House of bread. Then and we look the at bread the, of life was born in the house of bread. We yeah. look at the second letter, it's the letter Reish. Bet and Reish spell son in Aramaic. Where do we find the Aramaic? Psalms chapter 2, verse 12. Kiss the son. It says, Nashku bar penyenaf. It's the second letter in in the beginning God created, so God created the world in covenant in the beginning through His Son, Jesus. That's what it says. The first word in the Bible, you've already got the gospel. Wow. Why, then, why don't the rabbis want the ideographic language? Because if you read the ideographic language, you're going to see Jesus everywhere because He is the Word. And if you don't change it, His name to a curse word, then you're going to see Jesus everywhere in the Word. You see, they've changed the deep state, the fake news. It's been around for thousands of years. Mm. You ch if, you, you've, if the name means that Jesus is real Messiah, change the name. Don't only change it, turn it into a cuss word. If the name Lord means behold the hand, behold the nail, and now that He's been cross crucified and we see that's what it means, you need to tell the Jews, don't speak that name anymore. Why? Too it's holy. too holy. Well, it wasn't too holy for 4,000 years. Why is all of a sudden is it too holy? Well, because if you do, if you keep saying it, you're going to see that Jesus is really Messiah. So it's too holy. Don't do it. Remove the name. Change the name. Curse the name. Uh, a, change the alphabet. Do everything you can to hide Jesus. Have mm -hmm. a forbidden chapter. Forbidden chapter, yeah, Isaiah forbidden 53. Chapters. Isaiah 53 is a forbidden chapter. When I grew up as an Orthodox Jew, I remember being in, in the synagogue and, and they would open the scroll to read and they would hit Isaiah 52. It was, it was that week to read it. And from 52, the rabbi would start trembling like this. He said, we don't read from 52 to 54. We don't do we it. We don't more. read 53, yeah. Now, Rashi was one of the commentators, the rabbinic commentary. He says, we don't read Isaiah 53 because it's, it's Israel. It's speaking about Israel. That's what But don't say. read it because it seems to resemble Christianity. Because remember, now, and I want you to tell the Chinese restaurant story in a minute, but remember this, Isaiah 53, you know? Yeah. The, 
He was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace is upon his back. And it goes on as he stood before his accusers like a lamb before the, his shearers are silent. I mean, it's, it's just a picture of Jesus. He was buried with criminals. Buried with the thief criminals. on the cross. It's buried with criminals. Yet his prosperity, his, you know, he, in other words, he will live again. They will see him. So how much time do we have? Uh, we have about one minute. Oh, gosh, we're not going to be able to get to it. We'll have to <laughs> we tease might have your to. audience. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go ahead and finish today's show, and we'll just we'll pick up, and we'll do some B-roll. How about that? All right. That so you'll be good. You, all right. Yeah. So we got about a minute left. Is that right? Okay. Stay tuned, because we're going we're gonna to finish this up, and yeah. then we're going to talk a little this bit more on the next program. So you don't want to go anywhere. You want to tune back in tomorrow and uh, watch as uh, we continue this very interesting, interesting talk. You know, because it's amazing. We Christians don't realize a lot of this stuff. No. And we don't know a lot of things. And You don't get a lot of this in American pulpits or in American Sunday school literature. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I, well, I guess it goes back to we have to read the Bible the right way. Yes. And we need to study the Word. We thank you so much for watching, being a part of DTV. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers and your financial support. We really do need it, uh, especially during these summer months. Giving kind of goes down a little bit. So if you could help us out, we'd appreciate it. We don't see you anymore down here. We'll see you when we get up there. Goodbye. Goodbye.